Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of our Interview with the Experts series. Joining us today is an accomplished photographer of Lunenburg by the name of Stephen Ernst. Stephen is a ninth generation Lunenburg native whose ancestry dates to the town's founding in 1753. Stephen sometimes uses digital cameras, however many of his photographs are taken with traditional 35mm and 4x5 large format film developed and printed in his darkroom. Many times these are finished with traditional methods such as the near obsolete art of hand colouring. Stephen has kindly offered to tell us about the history of photography in Lunenburg, as well as the story behind how photographers of the past inspired him to create his own gallery and studio, S.A. Ernst Photography. Additionally, Stephen will be showcasing some hand-picked items of his vast collection of early photographs and cameras. That being said, please allow me to introduce you to Stephen Ernst, a practitioner and historian of antique photography. So basically the history of photography stretches back really as far as the early 18th century when several inventors had been vying to make a permanent latent image uh, for quite some time. Some of the famous inventors who had tried unsuccessfully included uh, Josiah Wedgwood of the famous uh, British Pottery Company and Samuel F.B. Morse, who is now famously remembered as the alphabetic code that was used uh, in transportation or in the communication for many years. However, it wasn't until 1826 that French inventor Joseph Nicephore Nieps first made a permanent photograph. It was very much a beginning. It was definitely not practical in its time. In fact, the exposure for that photograph took a uh, full eight hours <laughs> uh, of exposure before an image actually appeared. But it was a start, and shortly afterwards he teamed with another French artist and inventor, Louis-Jacques Mont de Daguerre, who uh, together they did work on uh, Niepce's projects for uh, a number of years, up until Niepce's death in 1833, and afterwards Daguerre continued uh, with his own findings. And eventually, in 1839, announced that he had perfected his method of capturing a photograph, which was known as the daguerreotype process, which is seen on the end here. The daguerreotype was a one-of-a-kind silver image. Uh, it was a copper plate covered in silver, exposed in the camera, and then uh, developed with a series of very violent chemicals <laughs> in order to create a photograph. So daguerre's process basically exploded overnight. Uh, photographers started popping up all over Europe and into England, and very shortly afterwards it came to North America. Now the first uh, photographer in this area was an artist from Halifax by the name of William Valentine, who happened to be in England when uh, the announcement of the daguerreotype was made. And it's strongly believed that he actually studied straight from Daguerre himself. So he learned the process, he comes back to North America, he stops in Boston and picks up a camera and all the equipment necessary, and then comes back to Nova Scotia, sets up a gallery in Halifax in January of 1842. That's actually only the second photo studio in all of Canada, or what will become Canada. Uh, there was one other one that opened a couple months before in Quebec, uh, but Valentine's was the second. It proved so popular that that was in 1842. By the end of that decade, there were approximately 12 daguerreotype galleries in Halifax alone. So it didn't quite make it down to Lunenburg yet, but what happened was, although there wasn't a permanent studio here, many of these photographers would have these traveling saloons where they would stop at town to town, advertise that they would be in Lunenburg or wherever from this date until this date taking photographs. And it was through that that we have the first document of a photographer being in Lunenburg uh, in Desbrezet's history of the county of Lunenburg. It published, uh, this is the second edition published in 1895. In it, he mentions a timeline of events happening uh, throughout Lunenburg's history, and it's an entry in 1859 on September 14th, which reads, A great gale at Lunenburg, like a tornado, lasted ten minutes. Fences blown down, fruit and ornamental trees torn up, daguerreotype saloon upset and broken to pieces. So that is the first reference we have to a uh, traveling photographer being in Lunenburg as early as 1859. The next time it shows up was when a young man from uh, Lunenburg County, Lewis Hertel, started a uh, photo studio here on Lincoln Street. 
It's not entirely sure when he started, because one of his advertisements in the Lunenburg Progress Enterprise in 1887 says that early last fall, after having managed my own gallery here for 12 years, I suspended operations going to New York and Boston for the purpose of getting new ideas about the making of photographs. So we can go by that saying that 12 years before 1887 would place him around 1875 when he started his studio. However, Hertel would have only been about 15 years old at the time. It's more likely that this advertisement from the Progress Enterprise from 1880, which is actually an advertisement for his brother James's tailor shop, also on Lincoln Street, the bottom of the ad has a bit of a, a extra note added saying, pictures taken in the same building, a splendid lot of oval and square frames just received, pictures taken from the original on a large scale with a frame and all complete from $1.50 to $3.50. And that ad was on April 6, 1880, which is more likely when Hertel would have set up his studio. He continued with this uh, studio pretty much for the rest of his life. He did die relatively young at the age of 65 in 1925, but up until about the 1920s, he photographed pretty much everyone in Lunenburg at one point or another. He started in the early days doing the ferrotypes, which uh, are more commonly known as tintypes, on a small sheet of uh, thin iron, and then worked his way up as the processes of in photography changed throughout the 1880s and 90s into doing the more famous carte de visite and cabinet cards, which were prints made from a negative. These differing from the earlier types like the tintype and daguerreotype, you that could have had uh, extra copies made and duplicates made uh, at any time and in any size, whereas in the early ones they were a one-off, that was it. If a photo such as the early fer uh, ferrotypes or daguerreotypes or uh, any of those were to be problematic during the development process or if there was an issue with uh, the exposure, most times the emulsion would just simply be wiped off and then recoated. Also times by the time uh, uh, by the time this process moved on towards the uh, negative, early negatives were on glass plates and oftentimes they would be reused as well where the emulsion would be scraped off of the, uh, on the plate and then recoded. A famous uh, story actually involving that uh, locally goes to uh, Nachman Studio in Halifax, which is a very prominent studio. William Nachman was uh, considered the photographer to the Queen uh, in Canada. He had studios in Montreal, Toronto, Halifax, St. John, and uh, just very famous all over uh, Canada. But in his Halifax studio, all of the glass plates that, uh, that he kept in 1917, he scraped off all of the emulsion and donated the glass to the city of Halifax for rebuilding after the explosion, because there was barely a pane of glass left to uh, in the city. So. The, uh, so the, unfortunately the negatives were destroyed, but they were put to good use. And I'm sure there are still some houses in Halifax that have uh, Notman plates as their, uh, as their uh, windows and may not even realize. <laughs> so his studio definitely prospered, as did Hertel. He was uh, not only involved in photography, but involved in many other things. And he sold musical instruments. He Actually, for a short period, I was told he even sold coffins. <laughs> and, uh, he was determined to make his uh, fortune somehow. He was heavily involved in real estate. He was heavily involved in the uh, fishing and shipping industry out of Lunenburg. Uh, definitely a prominent businessman in his time. And now he's mostly remembered for his photographs. And although he did do various uh, scenic shots of Lunenburg, which are a very important uh, resource today, he mostly did portraiture, and many of his portraits are quite uh, quite interesting, and the ones certainly that we know who they are. This one is of a three-generation family. We do happen to know that this is the family of Daniel Owen, his son D.M. Owen, and then his child, whose name we actually don't have, unfortunately. But Daniel and D.M. Owen were a father and son lawyer team here in Lunenburg. And at the time this photograph would have been taken in 1892, Daniel Owen was actually the oldest acting barrister in the province of Nova Scotia. This photo shows the beloved Father Cosman, the Lutheran minister here at Zion's Lutheran Church in Lunenburg, who was a long-standing uh, minister and clergy active in this town. Uh, Lewis Hertel's negatives now all belong to the uh, National Archives in Ottawa. 
They're known, this is such a great Lunenburg County thing, they're known as the fish barrel negatives because when the National Archives came down to retrieve them all, they were all stored in wooden fish barrels. <laughs> After uh, Hertel got out of the business in his last years, as his health declined in the early 1920s, he closed down his shop, and pretty much around the same time, another young photographer started out, John Knickel. Johnny Knickel, as he was known. He set up his studio here on Lincoln Street in 1921, and he continued doing portraits for quite some time uh, in, in the early years, and then, probably by the 1930s and 40s, Still did portraits, but focused much of his uh, work on scenics, which he became quite famous for. So we do have a couple early Knickel portraits along here, but then we also move into his more scenic work along here. So Johnny Knickel ran the studio for a number of years, became quite a prominent photographer, not only in Lunenburg, but in Nova Scotia in general. His work was right up there with the work of uh, W.R. McCaskill out of Halifax, a very famous Nova Scotian photographer. And uh, as a result, his work uh, still is considered very, sort of the iconic views of Lunenburg. Uh, remembering too, Knickel's time would have uh, featured the, uh, the Blue Nose in all her races and uh, just in general, her, her famous time uh, throughout the 20s and 30s while she was in Lunenburg. And uh, much of the change of the town in that period. So we have chemical photos here, such as uh, some Sunset of Blue Rocks, which is actually quite a famous one of his. We have a, a very rough version, but a, a nonetheless a great colored photo of the Lunenburg waterfront, probably in the late 20s, uh, maybe even the early 30s. But uh, certainly hearkening back to those wonderful days of the Forest of Spars that was talked about in Lunenburg Harbor with, uh, when it was full of shipping. And we have a wonderful Johnny Canuckle panoramic here of the foundry area during World War II when uh, much of many of the uh, Royal Canadian naval ships would have been coming into Lunenburg for repairs. So Knickel uh, continued his studio up until he started looking at retirement and in 1964 then sold his studio and everything with it to another young photographer, Wilfred Eisner, who was born in Lunenburg County, he went to Halifax for a number of years, uh, actually as a photographer of the Halifax Chronicle Herald, and then came back to Lunenburg uh, basically after being involved in a bit of a car accident while photographing something near the Northwest Arm and the Armdale Rotary. So he figured he wanted to get away from the uh, the busy city and uh, and doing news photography. So he came back to Lunenburg and just at that time saw the advertisement that Johnny Knickel was selling his studio. So he decided to purchase the studio, settle down, and again in the same breath of uh, what of what Knickel was doing, he then continued on and did quite a bit of portraiture work and other studio photography, certainly weddings and that sort of thing, but also tried his hand at scenic photography, which again, he'd never really done much of either. I do have here one of Will Eisner's photos of Blue Rocks, one of the very iconic scenes of the fishing uh, shacks in Blue Rocks, probably taken in the 1980s or late 70s. And, I, Eisner's time with Knickel Studio was, again, very prolific. He did very well in the studio. The major setback during his time was the Valentine's Day fire of 1977, when the entire studio was destroyed in a very large fire, as well as the original Fulton's Pharmacy building next to it. So the, the fire basically began in, probably in the studio, although Really, it's unknown today, but it was on Valentine's Day, 1977. The studio basically completely burned, and Wilf, uh, as he was known, was basically left without anything. He had to rebuild the entire works. Fortunately, he did have the foresight. The one thing that he did save out of the building was the original Johnny Knickel negatives. So, thinking forward to history, he grabbed the most important thing historically. Unfortunately for him, he lost all of the wedding jobs he had been doing. He lost all the, he lost his appointment books. We didn't even know what work he was planning, he was <laughs> expecting to do. Uh, there were advertisements in the Progress Enterprise for weeks afterwards saying, if you had booked a wedding with me, you're going to have to come back, please. And uh, 
so on. But he did he did build it up. Uh, in fact, I'm one of the items in my collection that I'm very happy to have is the camera that he started back with. This camera had belonged to another amateur photographer in Lunenburg by the name of Robert Sampson. And after the fire, Mr. Sampson had given this camera to uh, Wilf Eisner to get him back on his feet in those early months as uh, he was rebuilding the studio. So he used it for a short period, but it was still uh, the camera that, that he used for Canico Studio for a, for a short time in the late 70s. So build it up he did. He continued with uh, that studio and uh, did very well until his own time for retirement in 1999 when he in turn sold the studio to a John Kingwell from Dartmouth who, uh, who kept the negatives but took them to Dartmouth with him. So it was at that time that Kinnickle Studio left Lunenburg after being in uh, the town for approximately 80 years. But uh, Mr. Kingwell does still work with the uh, work with the negatives and sells reproductions, so they're not uh, they're not hidden away by any means, and uh, they're certainly uh, accessible uh, still to this day, which is what uh, Johnny Knickle and Wolf Eisner and certainly the le legacy that they left would have wanted to uh, to see. So. Hertel had three studios in town. The first one was started in the building known as Hertel Block, which was. Uh, the family office block on Lincoln Street. The building does still exist. Its apartment's now uh, the site of the Cranston Art Gallery today. Then after that, for a short period, he moved across the street to uh, the building, which is now known as uh, the Comfort and Joy uh, store. He was in the upstairs of that. And actually, there's a wonderful, famous photograph of Lincoln Street in the 1890s where you can very clearly see the sign that reads Photograph Gallery uh, off of that building. And actually it was a hurdle photo, <laughs> but, uh, anyways. And finally, by 1906, he had built his third and final studio uh, further down Lincoln Street, further to the, uh, to the west, and it's the building that's now occupied by the Dots and Loops store. So that was the, the last hurdle studio. The, the rooms upstairs, which are now apartments, are, uh, is where he ran his studio, but the old stairway is still in existence. It was common at the time for studios to be on a second floor because they were completely relying in the, uh, the Victorian era on natural light. So they needed top floor studios to get as much sunlight as possible. So he ran the studio on the upper floor and then did his other projects, his musical instruments and the gramophone selling and coffin selling uh, down on the, uh, on the bottom floor, which is now where Dots and Loops is located. Johnny Knickle had his studio across the street, uh, basically where the site of Lincoln Street Food is now located. But again, that building burned down in 1977. And in a bit of a twist of irony, when Wilf was looking for a new location to start his uh, studio, he was offered the building across the street, which was the home of the, of the former Lewis Herbal studio. So Knickle Studio ran in that location. Uh, again, the Dots and Loops building. Uh, 181 Lincoln Street, if I want the address, uh, until he retired in 1999. And you know, a young photographer here spent many a day looking at Wilf's uh, collection and just stare, staring at the pictures on the walls uh, in that building. <laughs> so, probably instilled something in me at that time. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, that, uh, that young boy at Knickle Studio who was looking at all the... Uh, all the photos and just standing awe-inspired by the scenes of Lunenburg throughout, it, throughout its long history, eventually was inspired long enough to uh, grow up to start his own photography business. And uh, here I am, I opened in 2011, uh, doing much along the same lines, starting out in portraiture, but now I have focused, as Johnny Knickel and Wilf Eisner et al. did before me, focus now mostly on scenics of this area. and. Uh, my uh, interest in the history of photography has caused quite a collection as well, and I am soon to release my first book, Lunenburg, A History in Pictures, which is due out uh, very soon uh, in September. And uh, it will feature many of the photos that are shown here, as well as a lot of other gems uh, throughout Lunenburg's long and uh, illustrative history. And uh, that's really, I think, about it. Boy, yeah.
I'd like to say a huge thank you to Stephen Ernst for sharing the history of Lunenburg photography with us. Please be sure to take a look at his studio, S.A. Ernst Photography. The links and information can be found on screen or in the video description down below. Thank you very much for watching today's interview with the experts video, and stay tuned for our next and final episode coming out on Friday, September 14th. Take care and see you next time. In it, he has, towards the end, a... In it, he... <laughs> take, take three. <laughs>